The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. I think it's everyone's passion to be healthy and sitting beside me is a woman who is a champion of good health. Please welcome to the show Cheryl Lopez of Purposely Healthy. Thank you, Nikki. You look smashing tonight. Oh, thank you. Look at you too. Thank you. Try. <laughs> Try. <laughs> um, so you're originally from Mumbai. That's right. Anybody That's here right. from Mumbai, by the way? No? Okay. No one? We're just doing a little... It's a great place. Yeah, it's a great place. <laughs> now, you have a fascinating um, background. Sure. Um, so, yeah. living so in Mumbai, you had a cable TV network. Two, right? Ooh, yeah. Two. Among, among other things. Wow. So, um, you know, I have fond memories of uh, Mumbai. Uh, grew up with three siblings and uh, parents that were our greatest cheerleaders, mm -hmm. still are. And my father was a businessman, and uh, growing up uh, in college, I was truly fascinated with the stock market. And I was, uh, you know, I was young, 16, 17, uh, 17. Um, but I just, you know, uh, wanted to, to be part of that system. And it was, a, it was a time where really no one was in the markets. And I made a lot of money in, in that. Uh, it was just uh, during those three, four years I was in college and uh, was able to, you know, uh, put down a down payment for my condo, for my house. And I think, even think till today as to why didn't I pursue it? It was just, I was having fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And uh, coming to your question about cable TV, um, you know, uh, I remember growing up, as I said, my parents were our greatest cheerleaders. And uh, my brother, my older brother, he was always into electronics. And there was not one item in the house that he didn't open. I don't remember till today whether he was able to put anything back, <laughs> right? But my parents, my father just sort of observed him, encouraged him. And he went on into electronics. And when cable TV was launching and satellite TV was really launching in India, he was right there, okay. and that's how we got into it. And um, you know, I had a network about of about five thousand people plus at that time, right? A uh, great team of people was making a lot of money. Life was good. Life was good. <laughs> so you're living the good life. Living the good life. Okay. Yeah. You make a decision to come to Canada. When was that? Yeah. So um, I then got married, and uh, my uh, my husband, who's my ex now. Um, husband of that at that, that time yeah yeah mm -hmm. second marriages um, was a merchant navy officer so he was doing well I was doing well we're making a lot of money but really you know he uh, just just what he was doing took him away a lot he was away a lot okay. yeah so uh, he uh, you know I had to fly to different ports and fly out of different ports just to be with him and uh, at that time you know he suggested that uh, let's go to Canada let's make a new life and, uh, you know, uh, that way he would give up what he was doing and we'd do something here, you know. Uh, so that's how the, the idea of coming to Canada started. And for me, like I said, with the money that I made in the stock markets, uh, my passion was to travel the world. So what I had done in those years prior to getting married, every year uh, for three months I would be out of the country. Well, it doesn't matter what part of the world I was in. Mm -hmm. And then I was recharged to work and do my thing back in India. Mm -hmm. So, so at that you know uh, at that time when he suggested it, I was okay with uh, with making that move. But by the time we put in the papers and the uh, we actually immigrated, the marriage was falling apart. Okay. And uh, we literally separated on the plane coming into Canada. And so I got up, I didn't have anyone, I didn't know anyone, uh, just a couple of friends. But I literally got off that plane not knowing where my next cup of coffee was going to come from. But the experiences that I had from, you know, traveling the world, I was able to bring that up and just hit the ground running. Okay. Yeah, okay. so that was cool. So you had to start all over. 
You know, it's, it's every immigrant, right? I mean, uh, you know, it's, it was hard because I had never had a job, so I had to go and apply for a job. I was in business, all, you know, so that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, um, but just like every immigrant, you know, you start from scratch and you build up. And yeah, I, I had to. And it was, it was hard because in India, I had everything. I had chauffeurs, we had, you know, somebody to do my bed. I had somebody, and it was, mm -hmm. yeah, I had to grow up really fast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and fend for yourself. Fend for myself. So you're in Canada. What year now? No, so now it's uh, you know Canada. It's it's uh, I'm, I'm here 14 years now. So 14 years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So built a life. Um, you know, um, I remember. You know, um, the first year I was in Canada uh, was really because uh, you know because of what had happened. I was in four homes. I, I had to move four times in that one year, and that was foreign to me. You know, I was in my parents' house till I was married, and then I had my own home after I got married. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so to me is, um, you know, when I, um, you know, uh, when I moved the fourth time, I said, if I'm going to move again, I'm going to buy. And at that time, I remember all my friends talking to me, and they said, you don't even know the market. You're not even here one year in Canada. And you, we've been here years and we can't buy a house. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, that's fine. You know, you write your story. I'm going to write mine. And, um, you know, with, you know, the good guy above. Sure. You know, I was able to buy my first condo within the first year of coming into Canada. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah McCallum. <laughs> but then, <laughs> I'm going to do this. <laughs> but then, you know, I conceived my son. With my ex, he, we would, he was trying to get back together. I, I did tell him, you know, straight up that I was not interested, but I did want a child. Okay. Uh, right, so. Kind of trick. No, no, no. <laughs> I was, I was, I was uh, you know, it was a blessing. Okay. It's a blessing. And so I, I booked my condo, McCowan and um, 401, in August of 2001. I was in, uh, I came to Canada February of 2000. And as soon as I uh, booked my condo, the next month I realized I was pregnant. So now I'm thinking, I'm a, th I'm a, I'm a thinker, dreamer. And I'm like, where's my s child going to play? How is he going to play soccer or whatever? So at that time, immediately I made a five-year plan of buying a house. And um, I remember, uh, you know, so uh, 2000 I came in. I made my plan, five-year plan. And then in 2006, I was losing my job. Uh, and I decided, you know what, I got to make the move. And I went in, bought the house, uh, three days before I lost my job. Still in Markham, right now, eight years. Wow. Love it. That is awesome. Yeah, my house, uh, son has a nice uh, place to live in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, um, that's amazing. That's, it's fortitude of will. Uh, for what you've been able to do, and uh, that's, that's a great story. Thank you. Um, and hopefully that can help and, you know, touch people who are maybe in a similar situation, um, yeah. feeling stuck. Yeah. Yeah, they you can. Know, they can get through. We, we have to get through. We have to push through. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, everyone tells us we can't, we can't, you know, we write our own stories. Yeah. You know, um, we got it. Gotcha. Uh, now, you, w when you're going through the period of, you know, being challenged and yeah. that, um, when we are stressed sometimes, it's, it's, it's the symptoms show through our body, right? And and you were you had a, an outbreak of uh, skin yes. issues. So what I'm happened was, um, you know, um, uh, I never ate well. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, even even back home, we, I had a cook at home, fresh food every day. But I was with the pizzas, and I was the only child that did the pizzas and the burgers and okay. and everything. And that lifestyle. You brought the balance to the. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that lifestyle continued into Canada. Okay. okay. And, um, you know, it, it took its toll. So uh, about seven years ago, I had some problems with my skin, some outbreaks. So I would have some uh, outbreaks in the summer around my elbows. And uh, went to the doctor. He prescribed hydrocortisone and, uh, you know, uh, said it would be fine. Uh, went back, you know, next year again, same thing, summer. You know, again, I had a problem, went in again again prescribed hydrocortisone and uh, at that time I said you know what let's run some tests let's see what's going on right. and um, so the test came back you know other than I'm being a little bit overweight I was fine everything was was great and I was just taken aback but I said okay you know again the third summer 
I had the same problem. Now it was a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and I went back and I said, look, you know, let, let's figure this out. Let's try and understand what's going on. Uh, we did the test. Again, I, other than being a little bit overweight, I was in the clear. That winter, mm -hmm. I got an outbreak all over my body. And was that a rash? It was a skin eruption just all over my body. Okay. And I, you know, here I was working hard, doing my, you know, taking care of my son, taking care of my mortgage, doing everything. I don't have time to deal with this. Yeah, another stress. I don't have time yeah. to be sick, right? Uh, went back to the doctor and we said, let's run some tests again. Did, and he said, you have to go to a specialist. I said, no, I want to see what's going on with the test, right? So run the test and uh, I'm, uh, he says, I'm fine. I said, look at me, like, how am I fine? Right, the tests are fine. So at that time, what we did is we just, uh, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to do this by myself. Okay. I do not want any more medical in intervention. I'm going to look out, I'm going to search. I, I just went out, you know, looking for information, finding out how the body works, and I was able to heal myself. You know, it took a while. I did everything from Ayurveda. I did, you know, um, hydration therapy, steaming, saunas, everything, and learned so much in that process. But I was able to heal myself. Okay. And through that self-healing, yeah. you discovered Purposely Healthy. Yes. So That's your, the company that you started. Yeah. So, you know, um, uh, yeah. And um, so I was really determined to be able to bring in products and provide information, truth, really, to you know, to a generation that does not know. We, we, we're not, uh, you know, um, being told or being made aware of, of what truth is. When I was eating all this stuff, I thought I was eating food, right? But there's nothing that's uh, providing nutrition to my body. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was robbing me of nutrition, right? right. right? Uh, so, um, you know, when we think of food, we have to change our concept of what food is, okay. right? Food is not the burger, the pizza, Food has to energize you, mm -hmm. right? When you eat food, you, sh you shouldn't be tired. You shouldn't be, you know, and, but most of the food that we eat is just got no nutritive value and that's where we are. And okay. that's what causes the problem. It causes right? the problem. So right? with Purposely Healthy then, uh, what is the mission? What is the whole goal of it? So let's focus on health, not disease, right? So if we can focus on health, keep our, uh, our uh, shift the paradigm a little bit and focus on health and understand that the body is, even though it's so complex, so incredibly complex, mm -hmm. it's yet so simple mm -hmm. and so forgiving okay. that if we don't take it to the point of no return, we can help ourselves, we can, help we ourselves. can heal ourselves. Okay, and, and how do you, what kind of services or products do you provide? So my, the products I have are acupressure products, so hand rollers, foot rollers, uh, body massagers. So there's over 7,200 nerve endings at the bottom of our feet and pa uh, palm of our hands. And if we trigger those or stimulate those points, we can remove the blockages in our body and promote healing. Okay. Where can people find you? Uh, my website, www.purposelyhealthy.ca. Okay. Um, look out into the audience lens and just uh, give a word of advice to someone who may be going through dis-ease right now. What's the fastest way to heal themselves? You know what? Um, I, I'm so glad to see so many women up here. Uh, it's just so great. Uh, I understand that the information that you have, we will take home and make changes, small changes in your lives. So starting with just uh, getting more fruit and more live, more vegetables, live food that you can eat, you know, uh, that's the best way. Uh, bite into an an apple, a fresh juicy apple, or just a mango, or take some orange juice, fresh squeezed orange juice. You'll never touch a boxed orange juice again. I mean, you know, that, that, so that's what I would encourage you to do. Okay. Just a little thing. All right. Cheryl, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so awesome. much for coming on the show. Cheryl Lopez, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com.